Ever since I stumbled upon a video of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy test flight when I was 15, I was deeply curious about space exploration. It was back then when I came across BPS Space's video that sparked a desire to build my own rockets. Since then, I've been working on my own projects with Drive. Yet here I am in June 2023 without coming anywhere near landing a model rocket. It's been long enough. Now it's time to finally tackle my original goal. When thinking about landing a model rocket, there are many constraints that I must take into account. First and foremost, I'm stuck with D-Class engines as they are the most powerful that are available here. Second, I still need to incorporate many mechanisms, even more so as I plan to make a combined launch and landing attempt. Thrust structure control for active stabilization, two pairs of engines, one for launch and one for landing, landing legs, backup parachute, and some mechanisms to control the altitude during the descent sequence. Now it's time to draft some new concepts to fit all these constraints into a single model rocket. Okay, so I think here's the rough first idea that I have in mind to accomplish this goal. To be able to launch and land the rocket, I figured that it would be best to make the rocket two-staged. Both should feature TVC control for stabilized ascent and descent. I approximated that the rocket will have a mass of about 1 kg, which is why I foresee engine clusters of 5 at both stages. The stages shall be held together by a rubber band that I want to dissect by burning through it with a heating wire. For the parachute system, I thought of utilizing the one I came up with for the Buffalo Mini rocket. The landing legs were the parts that needed the most innovation, as all previous designs bared way too much weight. Here I thought of simply using four wooden rods that are rotatable around one end. By limiting the rotation through a sloping flat surface and pulling them open with the rubber band, they make up a very simple yet effective landing legs mechanism. One final mechanism I realized I must use on the rocket are the descent fins that help to keep the center of pressure above the center of gravity during descent to help keep the rocket stabilized. Now let's print and see how it turns out. The rocket comes in at a weight of approximately 750 gram, even less than I expected. Something I noticed immediately is that the wooden rods won't do the job, so I replaced them with aluminium rods. While working on physical design, I was also eagerly working on the flight computer that would go on to control all these mechanisms. Today, the boat arrived. This is Buffalo Ravi. I hope that I didn't make any severe blunders on this board as I'm running tight on the schedule and any one of them could postpone a possible launch attempt in mid-January. Relatively soon, I noticed an error in the battery voltage evaluation circuit which will prevent me from assessing the battery's charge level but other than that, everything seems to come along nicely. In essence, the rocket build is complete. Yet, it's already October and I still have to upgrade the launch pad to fit Buffalo L's needs as well as program both the flight and launch computer. For upgrading the launch pad, I first had to replace the clamp structure with a slightly larger one to fit the diameter of Buffalo L. I added an anometer for ground level wind speed assessment as the area where I live in is prone to sudden wind bursts. I added an RGB LED strip as well as two speakers for stereo sound to warn nearby viewers of the upcoming launch and a self-designed display with an extra large digit size for showing the countdown time. I actually had to do this PCB twice as I accidentally chose a common cathode display even though the according driver I see was made for common anode displays. I also created a new launch computer to control all these new features. Finally, I designed the housing with a perfect plane forward. Now it's time for the most time-consuming part of the entire process, the software. 
To keep you engaged, I will spare your description and immediately show you the tuning I did next. I tuned the rocket's control parameters with the help of this drone motor test stand I created years ago. Found reasonable PAD gains, then tested the combined counter and sequence, the mechanism deployment of the rocket and the electric ignited ignition of the launch pad. After checking the weather, arranging the launch time and making all the systems flight ready, it was time for the much anticipated launch day. For this one, I wanted to verify the actively stabilized ascent and gather valuable in-flight data upon which I can base later work. It was January 14th, the weather was foggy, there was over 80% humidity, minus 5 degrees and wind speeds up to 15 km per hour. Yet I was too hyped up and wanted to start either way. It was freezing and when it came to launching, only three of the four engines ignited. Thus, the rocket barely lifted off and tried to stabilize itself and then flew against the anemometer stand. The engine didn't ignite as the electric igniter dropped out of the engine and due to a lack of verification, this pre-flight error went undetected. The first flight didn't look promising, yet I still gathered valuable in-flight data such as good rocket orientation and the awareness that the rocket even triggered self-abort in this scenario. A week later, on January 21st, the weather got better with only minus 2 degrees, less humidity and lower wind speeds. By visually verifying that all igniters were inside the engines, I hoped to prevent an additional engine misignition. I also shortened the anemometer stand and had to replace the launch computer due to broken pyro channels. Further, three of the five pyro channels on the flight computer also got damaged by continuously testing and a faulty parachute design. Therefore, I had to conduct state separation, parachute deployment, as well as landing legs and fins deployment at the same time. Usually, they would happen in a successive manner. After over three hours of debugging and fixing all the errors that came up, I was rewarded massively. This was the cleanest rocket ascent I've ever achieved. The rocket didn't use any ascent fins, so no passive stabilization system was active. There was quite a high roll rate, and yet the rocket remained perfectly stable all the way up till about engine burnout. Then the rocket deployed all the mechanisms at the exact time and in the exact manner as expected. Clearly, the descent rate of both the descent and ascent stage was quite high. Still, you have to keep in mind that the parachute of the descent stage only acts as a backup and in normal operation, the rocket would attempt a propulsive landing. If you enjoyed the video and you are eager to build something similar, then feel free to check out my Patreon. Here you can get access to STL files of my Buffalo Mini Rocket. Starting today, you can also acquire the STL files of Buffalo LCDC system and print it yourself. Got interested? Then head over to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N under JM Space or click the link in the description. By becoming a Patreon, you simultaneously support these projects. Finally, thank you for your interest in model rocketry.